Hey everybody, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about why the justice system is racist. This video is going to be a little bit longer than my usual videos, but bear with me. It's still going to be under 10 minutes, maybe even under 5 minutes. I hope you still appreciate the points that I raise. So, the justice system is broken. It's racist. And here's why. In 2017, the Office of the Correctional Investigator published a report that included statistics on Indigenous people in Canadian prisons. Here are some highlights. Indigenous people make up 26.4% of Canada's prison population. Indigenous people make up only 5% of the general population. That means Indigenous people make up a 500% larger proportion of the prison population than the general population. Since 2007, federal prison population increased by under 5%. In that same period, the Indigenous prison population increased by 39%. Indigenous inmates are less likely than non-Indigenous inmates to be granted parole. Indigenous persons receiving higher security classifications than non-Indigenous persons Indigenous inmates are released later in their sentence than non-Indigenous inmates. Indigenous inmates are more likely than non-Indigenous inmates to be segregated, undergo use of force, and end up in maximum security. Indigenous inmates are more likely than non-Indigenous inmates to return to prisons due to parole suspension or parole re revocation. And despite entering correctional programs more quickly and finishing those programs sooner, Indigenous inmates are released later and revoked more often, and so on. There's just no way that Indigenous people are committing crimes at such a high rate, let alone to warrant harsher penalties. It just doesn't make sense. If anyone claims that the Canadian justice system is fair, then they must account for this discrepancy. They must be able to explain why one small minority group is being convicted of such a large proportion of the crime. One possible explanation is that Indigenous people are prone to crime. That's a possible explanation, but it's also a racist one. There's no genetic predisposition towards crime, or if there is, it isn't the genes related to indigeneity. Unless someone has some evidence that suggests the pre-contact Americas were plagued by crime. That being said, it's not even just an Indigenous issue. Black Canadians represent the fastest growing demographic in Canadian prisons. There are 70% more Black inmates in prison than there were in 2006. In fact, the rate of Black incarceration has risen every year since at least 2005. They make up 10% of the population in prisons, yet only 3% of the general population. So if Indigenous people commit more crimes because they're Indigenous, then does that mean Black people commit more crimes because they're Black? I mean, if criminal, if criminal disposition is genetic. White people make up not only a smaller proportion of the prison population than the general population, that proportion has been dropping. So if Indigenous and Black people are more likely to commit crime because they're Indigenous or Black, then surely white people are less likely to commit crime because they're white. And can you start to see why this viewpoint is racist? It's the same old refrain white people used to take land away from indigenous people, to enslave them, and to preach the depravity out of them. They're naturally uncivilized, and white people are civilized, which is why white people are entitled to brown land, persons, and spirits. But what if we don't take that racist stance? What if we admit that people aren't predisposed to crime based on race genetics, but we still think that the justice system is fair and balanced? Well, you still need to account for that disparity. Maybe Indigenous people and Black people do commit crime at a higher rate, but it's not because of genetics. Maybe it's because of their circumstance. For example, Indigenous people have a lower average income than the national average. They have lower education rates, lower unemployment, worse health, higher rates of violence, and so on. But then we're back to where we were on the imprisonment issue. Do they fare worse socially because they're Indigenous? Are Indigenous people genetically predisposed to be impoverished, do worse in school, die sooner, and so on, just because they're Indigenous? To blame Indigenous people's social ills on their indigeneity is the height of colorblindness. It's to ignore the decades, even centuries, 
of institutional racism that has stripped them of their land, their language, their family, their culture, their language, their autonomy, their spirit. My earliest ancestors who came to what is now Canada did so 400 years ago. They weren't the first settlers either. White people as a group have been trying to erase indigeneity for a very long time. And because of indigenous resilience, their every effort of white settlers has ultimately failed. All they have left is the justice system. So, white car cops card indigenous people at higher rates. White cops arrest them at higher rates. White judges sentence them at higher rates. And white prison officials oppress them at higher rates. If reserved lands didn't punish the indigeneity out of them, maybe reserved prisons will. And that is why the justice system is broken and racist. Check the description for links where you can read more on these topics. I hope you liked my video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. If you didn't like my video, give me a thumbs down and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video and subscribe to my channel and I look forward to talking to you again soon.